Hey guys, what is up? I ran a survey recently on my channel that confirmed something I kind of suspected for a while now. I'm an idiot. Let me explain. I posted this survey about what kind of printers people own and a vast majority of you have an FDM printer, whether that's your only printer or in combination with a resin 3D printer. Not a lot of people have resin 3D printers, actually. And I've been all like super snobby about, hmm, you must have a resin 3D printer, hmm, but I go. So I was kind of down on FDM printers for a while. You know, I had a Ender 5, a, um, what was that, Sidewinder X1. So I've had FDM printers in the past printing out mostly like kind of holders. I did print some lure painting snitz, snitz, snitzels. The stencils, which I decided I hated. Painting lures, that is. But um, the last printer I had was Sidewinder X1, and it literally sat unused for months. So I finally decided, hey, you know, it's just taking up space, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And that was about a year ago. And I'd seen some new FDM printers come out, and nothing was really exciting until I saw this. Now that's the X1 Carbon, which is a friggin' amazing looking printer. Might have to pick one up, we'll get into that in a bit. But when I saw this, I was like, there it is. That is the printer for me, the Bamboo Labs P1P, which is like a stripped down X1 Carbon, for those who don't know. It uh, prints the same quality, same speed. You just basically don't have an enclosure. Uh, it doesn't come with the AMS, although you can add an AMS, which is automatic material handling system, which is prints multiple different colors of uh, filaments or you know just types of material if you want to mix stuff together you know pla with petg or pla with some easily removable support material all that kind of good stuff right and so i'm like okay like i need to buy this printer and i have been having an absolute blast with it i forgot how much fun fdm printing is and how really easy it is because you you print it and you rip it off the build plate and you're pretty much good to go, like with whatever you're printing, whether it's something for your kayak, something, a lure, like it's refreshing after going through, you know, resin printing for the past year where, you know, once you get done with a print, you still have, you know, 30 to 45 minutes of dealing with that print for cleaning and curing and all that kind of stuff. But the thing with the P1P is it is blazingly fast. So where previously, you know, FDM printers were really slow, especially compared to resin, at least in the sense of multiple copies of a model, right? So if you're gonna print a lure body on resin, it takes you just as much time to print one as it does to print seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, however many you can fit on the build plate. And that's really cool when you wanna kinda of crank out a bunch of different versions or a bunch of the same lure over and over again. But this P1P is so freaking fast, dude. Like, you can crank out parts. Most parts, most lures take an hour to maybe an hour and a half to print. And I'm talking mainly hard body lures here. I still do not recommend FDM for injection molds. Uh, we're gonna have a few videos on that coming up where I'm gonna kind of try some different materials, try some different stuff, but you know, man, it's just so refreshing to um, hit print and go and start cranking out whatever you're printing. It's almost a disaster. One.
What's up, man? How's it going? You know, the one advantage FDM has over resin is the breadth of materials you have. All right, everybody thinks of FDM printing and, you know, PLA, which is kind of the standard bearer for that. You can print ABS, you can print ASA, you can print carbon fiber, you can print nylon, you can print polycarbonate, you can print like all kinds of crazy materials. Now, those are a little bit more difficult to print. You need an enclosure typically for a lot of those. They're not super easy, they're not cheap, um, but they exist. Where in resin, you're stuck with UV cured resins and the properties of those. And again, we're gonna have a bunch of videos coming up comparing an FDM printed lure with a resin printed lure, strength test, kind of failure modes, all that kind of good stuff. So if you wanna see that, hit the subscribe button. It's gonna be cool, man. I'm really excited about that. Got one. Bass. I knew there had to be one sitting under here. I got it, thanks. Ooh. That's cool. Little guy. Back to the P1P, right? Why I love this printer. It's half the cost of the X1 Carbon, but you get all the quality and all the speed. And really, when I was looking at the X1 Carbon, I was still in my elitist resin mode, right? Like, oh, well, you know, I might use this every once in a while for something, you know. I've been printing friggin' nonstop since I got it. I burned through so many rolls of filament. Like, it's, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy, totally crazy. And the slicer it comes with is Bamboo Studios, which is a version of Prusa Slicer. And, um, you know, the, the great thing about the P1P is, I tell people it's like the apple of the 3D printer world, right? You're in a, relatively closed ecosystem, right? You can use different slicers with the P1P. There's actually an open source um, slicer that is a fork of the Bamboo Lab slicer that they're adding new stuff to all the time. Uh, the parts on the printer are, I, w I don't wanna say proprietary, but they're not kind of standard off the shelf parts. You can get some additional parts from Chinese vendors now, they're coming in into the market. But um, you know, most of the parts you're gonna get from Bamboo Labs directly, which they have great prices, right? They're not Apple in the sense that they're charging you, you know, three times as much as the going rate for a part. They're, you know, their parts are super inexpensive and relatively available, right? Everybody's got supply chains and shoes right now. But what I'm saying about Apple is it's really a tightly coupled ecosystem, right? The company that is making the printer is programming the slicer. And so kind of out of the box, your defaults rock because they are specifically designed for your printer. So as a beginner 3D printer, this is great. For someone like me who I'm really just tired of messing with machines, I wanna make products, I wanna make things and not mess with machines, it's fantastic. I mean, I, I loaded up, not even Bamboo Labs PLA, some Overture PLA from Amazon, hit print, boom, rocked it out of the park. It was great, fantastic quality print and super fast. Another one. Seems a little chunk, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bigger. A little fatter. Of course, I lost my lure now. Sweet. Yeah, it tore off. Oh, there it is. If I touch the water, I'm dead. Oh, awesome. All right, bro. I got it back, it was floating. 
So I've heard a few criticisms about Bamboo Labs support. I haven't had to deal with support. I haven't really had any problems that needed to involve support, but you know, Bamboo Labs is a new company. They released an amazingly successful product line and you know, they're having growing pains. Like I, I can't think of a company that has launched a product, had a kind of blow up in the market who hasn't had support pains. Support people are a pain in the rear to hire. Right? It's like, it's tough, dude. Support is tough. I tried to build a support organization before. It's hard. I sucked at it. I did a terrible job. So, you know, I give them slack there. They have some shipping delays. You know, there's supply chain issues. That's all this kind of part for the course of what's going on these days, right? And a lot of people point to that with the, you know, proprietary parts that if Bamboo Labs goes out of business, you have a brick. And I just don't think that's true, right? You have a fork of the slicer. The, the hot ends are now available on Alibaba. They'll make their way over to Amazon, I'm sure. You know, if, if Bamboo Labs explodes tomorrow, there is enough community around this printer that they're going to come up with parts to keep this thing going because it's a great, great printer. Hey, puppy dog. I'm out of shape, bro. That little hike up the hill almost killed me. That wasn't scary at all. All right, spot number two. Go down here. Yeah. This spot is like super snaggy, but maybe we'll get lucky. So for fishing lures, would I suggest buying one? Yeah, absolutely, man. Like we're gonna go through some really cool lure designs I have going on right now that are what I call, you know, print and fish kind of deals where you can pull them off the printer, hook them up and go fishing kind of right away. That is the power of FDM. And like I said, the quality is great. It's not resin quality, but dude, it's friggin' amazing. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see those videos. If you got any specific questions about the P1P or maybe the X1 Carbon, I don't know, leave a comment below. If you, if you have any lures you want to see me print, leave a comment below. And check out this video for comparing resin 3D printers and FDM printers for fishing lures and lure mold needs. Take care, guys. Tight lines.